Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Wenley, tell us, how do you go about designing these characters? Does Hafiz describe the character to you? How do you do this? How does this collaboration work? Well, Hafiz tells me the backstories of each of the characters. For example, it was like uh, Oro is going to be is going to be scary. Like he has to he has to be scary, and at the same time, he, he should look good for the ladies. So basically, I I had to get a mask that that portrayed that fear, that sh that showed that scariness in it. And I remember the the was it the game I was playing at that time that I thought was scary was um, Dark Siders. Was Dark Siders. Then uh, I saw a mask. For the Punisher. Wait, so Dark Siders, Dark Siders one or two. I I actually don't remember. I think Dark Siders two. That would be death, death first. Death. That's Dark Siders two. So now that you this, now that you mention it, I'm just realizing Oro does kind of look like death. It never exactly. occurred to me. Ha <laughs> ha. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So once once you gave me the backstory, it was my job to. Do the rest. It's my job to do the rest. So I just combined a couple of things here and there. I don't want to make it look overly African. Like I don't want it to look like this. This artist is trying to make this very, very African. And at the same time, I also wanted to have a little bit of the Africanness, the Nigerianness. So, that okay, was so, so, so basically, you want him to look Nigerian, but you don't want it to look like you're trying too hard. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes, I get that feeling sometimes because like, so let's say I'm wearing a t-shirt and jeans and I'm representing Kugali at an event and someone's like, oh, why are you not wearing like native traditional wear or something? And it's like, okay, yeah, we do wear traditional wear, but we also wear like Western clothes sometimes. Exactly. Not all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, but even though, to be honest, like when you know, what, let me leave that. Well, tell about the what about the other characters when you're designing them? You, you have complete creative freedom. Hafiz just tells you the backstory and you design them, or he he never yes, describes yes. them to you. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Except except maybe Omoku. He did describe Omoku. He was like, he looks, he's a monster, and he has a good legs and horns. That, that one he did describe. Oh, those are goat's legs. <laughs> yeah. Now that you mention it, now that you mention it, I've just never seen any anything that muscular with goat legs before. Your characters are always so buff. Yeah, I'm working on that now. <laughs> So I think you, you once mentioned to me like you wanted Oro to look like attractive to the ladies. Yeah, we even, we, we even did a nude. Yeah, we did a nude picture, like... but it didn't get the reaction we wanted. Like we scared the ladies even more rather than attractive. Exactly because I mean he's more muscular than they like. Ladies like the athletic build, and Oro is like. I don't know, he's like bigger than the rock. I remember we had this conversation, yeah. Viola and I, or Bailey and I, when he brought, it was like, I see what girls are calling sexy. Then he showed me the pictures of the girls, like, ew, Oro cannot look like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, when I went on, after I had drawn it, designed Oro, he, he was not, the ladies did not find him sexy. So I actually had to go online and do a little bit of research. So what do you guys consider sexy? Especially uh, you manga readers, the otaku, so to speak. And then they were like, okay, this is what we consider sexy. This is so they showed me this really lean, tall, not from those that manhwa. muscular. From yes. those manhwa they read. I was yeah. like, no, 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 just no. I can imagine. So what is the, your third, um, Ayman, what does Ayman Mimiko, did I get the name right? Yes, you did. Um, that, that's a lady, right? Oh my God. No, it's <laughs> Ah, <laughs> I had to be sure because I don't recognize that kind of, I don't recognize the name. 
So, okay, so what does he do in all this? He's a writer as well, and it makes my life a living hell because it makes me like rethink every plot. It, so, it, like, it's my it's the double check. He writes Oro sometimes, and then we get to agree on how best to move the story forward. So, it's as much as a co, <laughs> as a co writer on Oro as I am. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, no, he says they agree. I want to point out to everybody that they typically never agree on, on anything. On anything. Drives everybody nuts. Right? No <laughs> well, sometimes it's, it's better for the story, but sometimes it's worse. But I think you guys are doing a good job so far. Yeah, so, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I mean, so from what I've read so far, the, there's this character, the Doctor, and I'm really curious as to how did he come back to life. Then there's Oro, and I'm curious as to how did he get his god, how did he become um, a demigod if he was born as a regular human. Then there's um, this group, the, uh, what do you call them, the Lethal Seven or something like that? The Lethal Nine, but Mes now they are called... Lethal Nine. Lethal Number Nine, but now oh. they are called Meson, yeah. Okay, but if you're renaming them to now, and for those of our viewers who don't speak Yoruba, that's um, Yoruba for nine. In the comic, I think they've been cut down to like five or six. So, are they going to be called uh, Maru or Mefa? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still mess up because um, just like the doctor has made it back from the land of the dead, the others two are on that journey. Because their ultimate goal is immortality for Meson, for them to uh, never cease to exist and be able to um, overlook their treasures for the rest of eternity. So that's for Meson. And the Doctor's immortality, Oro 3 explains a part of it, uh, or is exploring some part of why he has returned from the dead. So look out for Oro 3 uh, in the Kugali magazine. And, uh, yeah, so basically, an um, Oro's demigod origins will be explained in detail when we go into the origins of Oro in the story arc, yeah. Okay, so you guys have done something that is usually very difficult for writers to do, in that in the first three issues, you create enough plot points, you create enough plot points to make the reader wants to actually know more about these characters. So there's a guy in the story who basically thinks he has lost his girlfriend, like his girlfriend died. He, he blames Oro for it. And I found that very intriguing because Oro, did, this girl was sacrificed to Oro by the villagers. But Oro is like, I didn't ask for a sacrifice. Like that got me, I was like, okay, this, this, is, this is going to be interesting. Oro is like, I'm, I'm not a god asking for sacri blood and human sacrifices to help you people. I would help you anyway. Like all that, that is, um, that is one of the things I love about Oro. The depth you guys are, um, the themes you guys are willing to explore. And that is the, one of the reasons we chose you for our Kugali magazine Raki edition. Because on the Raki edition, we want to put comics that are for... Um, more mature audiences, people who like darker stories, and your mad comics generally fits that thing. Thank you. Oh, and congratulations! I remember you guys won two awards at last year's Lagos Comic Con. Yeah. We yeah, I have them yet. Oh, I was wondering yeah. where my plug no. was. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. So. The, the, um, yeah, what other yeah, award yeah. winning comics should we be expecting from my comics? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm up there. Yeah. Yeah. Up there. It's going to be awesome yeah. like, okay. if I say that myself. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, if, if someone asked you to tell them about Annabelle in just one sentence, what would you say? I'll leave Viola to um, say that. Like, Viola. What, what <laughs> I was like, I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. In one sentence. Well, I don't know how to say this in one sentence. <laughs> I think I'll be the writer. 
Okay, um, Annabelle is a girl that, oh, it's kind of hard to explain, but she's this girl that exists in another realm, and she has the ability to find life each time. What we are going to explore with this is, we want to explore the issue of being chronically ill and fighting for life at the same time, and yet being a superhero at that. So it's kind of like complicated things that we're looking at. And yeah, well, that's all I can give away, but just trust me, this will be awesome. So she's an abiku? Something like <laughs> that. <laughs> but we all know that nowadays it's a sickle cell disease kind of thing. That, but, so that's the thing we're exploring, yeah. Right. Um, Hafiz, would you do the honors and tell our viewers who are not Nigerian what an abiku is? Oh, an abiku is a spirit child that comes to the world and doesn't stay long and has to return to the spirit world. So this usually causes mothers some kind of distress because each time they give birth to a child, the child lives for a while and dies. And then they keep coming back and dying and dying. So the mother has to do some certain sacrifices to allow the child to stay. Okay. Yeah, it's basically spawned up in legend in Nigeria. They would say the, when the child is dying, before the child dies, they will make incisions and marks in the body. And then when the mother gives birth to a new child, you will find those marks. On the body as well, yeah. Yeah. Ah, speaking of marks, do you guys like have put tribal marks or any of those things on your characters? Oh, just to mention, like we did Oro 3, and um, we put in CBD marks on the color of one of the guys in Asorok. And then Black Panther did it. Now it's going to look like we copied Black Panther, but we didn't know that they were going to do it before Black Panther, <laughs> before, before Black Panther did the CBD marks thing. And yeah, so ah. we did it before no, Black Panther. One thing Man. we are going to explore, but I have not told Afiz yet, we'll discuss that later, is um, I am thinking uh, Oro would have mass. All, uh, a lot of masks and decisions in this and the parts where uh, the parts are covered in bandages. Ah, like he can that should be interesting. Them. That should be interesting. So, um, but you just mentioned the Black Panther. Do you ever imagine like Oro in a movie or an animated, like an animated movie or a live action movie? Do you ever imagine either Oro or any of your other comics? In an animated movie or live action and which would you prefer animated or live action live action for me yes yeah, same here because it opens the character to a wider audience than an animated right um you know i noticed like if it's like animated like um let's just say the kind of animated movies marvel and dc release only like people who read the comics or watch the cartoons tend to watch those animated movies but when you do a 3d animated movie like what pixar um does so when you do anything like i don't know in inside out or toy story everyone watches it it's open to a wider audience so sometimes i'm like okay the animated movies that make it to the cinemas are open to the same audience as um, live action movies. Look at the um, The Incredibles 2 is coming out this year. Yeah, but um, you know, like those type of stories that Pixar and uh, Disney do, they are mostly for everybody. And when I say everybody, children included. And if you look at the, yeah. the DC films or the Marvel films, especially DC films, they're usually for a uh, more mature audience. And they're usually darker, not usually for everyone. Yeah. So yeah, so it limits the type of audience that will go and see it. But the Pixar, Pixar is already a brand that children identify. And so when they the Pixar oh. film, the mothers and their children are going to watch it, including the fathers. But when there's a DC animated movie, it's mostly still the comic really? fans that will go and see it first because the mothers won't take their children to see, except it's Lego Batman, <laughs> to go see animated Batman. But yeah, even Lego Batman. They, I know Nigerian mother won't take Nigerian mother won't take their children to to see Lego Batman. The level of profanity in those things. <laughs> okay, so let's round up. Um, okay. So, but 
if you were to do a live action movie of any of your comics, it will have to be R rated. So you're already you're still limiting the audience. But then again, nowadays R rated superhero uh, movies are doing well. So we, if you had to pick only one of your comics to do an R rated version of a live action movie, which would you do? Okay, I think I'm sure we both have different answers. So I'll let Biola go first. Yeah, I'll pick one. <laughs> And what about you, Hafiz? I'll pick Osita. Okay. So I'm going to ask you the same question again. You have one sentence to tell us what Osita is about. What do you say? Osita is a medical student that can control an ancient war masquerade. Why do I feel like you made that up because of your fantasies of yourself? You're, you are a medical doctor, aren't you? Yeah, the, the artist who draws it, Kesh, has actually also said that. Like, why do I feel like I am drawing a physical physis life? Okay. All right. So, just two more questions. Um, so, you said, Us Usita, what kind of music would you picture in this movie, in a live action movie of Usita? Okay. I don't. For. If it were Oro, it would be uh, Alexandra Desplat because he makes the kind of uh, music that goes with such melancholy. Then for Osita, it would be regular hip hop Nigeria jams, like because that's what the story is very contemporary. So from Olamide to the band to YC, such type of. Thing. Okay, that would be really cool. Like once we can get to the point where we have a big budget, like a good super. Let me let me not say let me not call it superhero per se. Let me just say um, fiction. I don't know something that they have powers. I don't, I don't even know what what to use to describe it. But we like superhero contemporary. We have to yeah. identify with the brand. So superhero. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So. Um, for everyone watching this, we still have a few days left on our Kickstarter campaign and you can get, you can read Oro in the Kugali Anthology Raki edition. It's one of the three comics that will be featured there and because we hit our stretch goal, we are going to have some behind the scenes um, concept art and other stuff like that in this book. So you get to read Oro, you get to see like how mainly design some of the characters before the final version all that good stuff so do you guys want to say any last thing to your fans i'm pretty sure you have some fans on our channel by now okay i'm not sure <laughs> well the concept of being fans is foreign to me it's like well if we do have fans i would like to thank you guys for reading us and making us relevant and for make, voting for us to win those beautiful awards and we hope to do more and never disappoint you yeah. all right guys thanks so much for this interview it was fun i hope to do it again soon when we have like more content to talk about <laughs> all right guys this is Tony for you signing out for kugali <laughs>